This video is about characteristic curves for transistors and how important they are in understanding about the constant current region in a transistor, otherwise called the active region. I've started from the back part of the notes that I made for this video, and here are some takeaway questions. Here is a printed wiring board for the circuit that we're working with, and I've asked what's the function of this variable resistor? And I've also asked if we change the value of this resistor, will the collector current change? Let's go up to the top of the notes. BJT characteristic curves, part one. I am making a part two as well. I've already started on that. And part two is the AC characteristics, putting a signal into the base. We'll be looking in this video at cutoff, saturation, and the active region. In the cutoff region, basically no current flows. If the base current is zero, IC is also zero. Don't need to say much more about that, other than the fact that I did make one slide which I've severed this wire going into the base, and then that puts me into my maximum voltage parameters for breakdown, because uh, VCE zero, VCE rather base open, VCE O, um, is only 20 volts maximum, and uh, I'm running 20 volts maximum in my circuit. You can see here I've got uh, 20 volts uh, VCC, voltage common to the collector. And if I sever the uh, base, um, then the maximum parameters that we'll have a look at shortly uh, say that I'm sitting right on the maximum voltage VCE with the base open. Saturation. We use this uh, configuration in switching because the uh, collector emitter junction comes down to almost zero volts, around about 100 millivolts, 200 millivolts, and therefore we can pump a lot of current through the transistor to uh, power a relay or a lamp or something, and uh, knowing that power equals volts times current, the voltage across that junction multiplied by the current IC going to result in a very low power dissipation for the transistor. Characteristic that we need to know about that, and we'll be taking a close look at, is that the base collector junction is actually forward biased. You can see here VCE has to be less than VBE to put it into saturation. Uh, while I'm talking about that saturation there, um, if we look at this collector characteristic curve, Normally you see a family of curves, but this particular curve is taken from a textbook Introductory Electronic Devices by Painter, as are those top notes. And this saturation region here happens on the left-hand side of VK, the voltage knee. And the voltage knee is where the VCB forward bias occurs to the left. And of course the same point, this is where our... Uh, Reverse bias happens on the collector base region to put us into the active region. So back up here, having a look at the active region. The active region, you can see here, big difference. Saturation has forward collector base bias. Active region has reverse collector base bias. In the active region, IC is purely controlled by IB. You can have a very wide range of external uh, RC in this circuit and uh, what will happen will be uh, voltage difference across RC and the resistive region collector emitter becomes a very much resistive region in this type of configuration compared to what it was in the saturation and very important again beta times IB equals IC and a wide range of uh, external resistors we can have with that, and we'll have identical current flowing through. This is shown again on this curve, uh, whereas VCE is along the bottom axis of the graph, and uh, IC is up the side. IB is set to 100 microamps. I, in fact, used 100 microamps. I had 5 volts, if we call that 700 millivolts across the BE junction, minus from 5, 4.3 volts divided by 43k, around about 100 microamps of base current going into my transistor. So for a very wide range of uh, uh, values here, I would in fact get around about 10 milliamps for this particular 
type of transistor and the manufacturer's uh, set of characteristic curves. Again, if we look at this tiny inset uh, here and thinking about this saturation area, um, if we I've done it graphically up here because it's a little bit hard to understand sometimes this. If we get the VBE and we minus the VCE from it, that's 0.95 minus 0.3, we'll be left with 0.65. And you can see there that we're actually forward biased now on that junction because this is NPN. So forward biased, I'm actually in the saturation region, which is to the left of that knee point on that graph. Um, some other things about these uh, characteristic graphs. These notes come from Boylstad, a uh, book I've used a lot over the years. And the lower that we have for the base current, the flatter the slope is um, along for the IC. You can see here if we only have uh, maybe 5 microamps or 10 microamps, slope is very minimal. But as I go up here and I really push some current into that base on this particular transistor for these graphs, um, 90 microamps, 80 microamps, 70 microamps, look at the slope much higher, going to result in a much more non-linear uh, output in AC conditions. Um, this graph here simply showing something that we learned about diodes and the temperature effect uh, with more current, more forward current being pushed into the uh, transistor junction. Uh, the junction gets hot and the turn on for that junction starts to pull back. So that's why we get a set of uh, VBE uh, or VBE changes uh, as, as we have more work being done by the transistor and this results of course in thermal runaway. Um, back in the 1970s when I was studying electronics uh, we had things called curve tracers, large oscilloscopes that were dedicated to doing transistor curve tracing. Very expensive. Today a curve tracer is something we can make up and we can feed. You can see here it's got a multi-vibrator and a handful of other components and we feed that into the Rigol oscilloscope and look, we generate a nice set of characteristic curves. Um, something that we'll be doing more in the next video is drawing a load line through the characteristic curves and uh, then we'll do a Q point uh, which gives us midpoint bias uh, for our transistor amplifier. Uh, I found a better picture of that here and in fact another set of characteristic curves ranging from uh, IB0 up to IB base current 225 microamps and Q point nice and central there. Uh, if we've got uh, cut off at 12 volts, saturation up here and there's the uh, Q point set there at uh, 6 volts. We'll look at, uh, in the next video, about uh, clipping. We'll look at cutoff clipping and we'll look at saturation clipping. And if you turn your head to the right, um, that 2 volts, this is the output uh, waveform based around VCE. And uh, that, that would be uh, the lowest point in your output waveform. And if we get saturation clipping, that's the one that gets clipped. Uh, saturation taking place up here. Um, the active region for the transistor. Um, look, perhaps I'll come back to that in just a moment. First of all, we'll have a look at some manufacturer's data sheets for the transistor. We're using a BC109, which uses this TO18 uh, case, metal case with a tab on the side. Uh, I made a video earlier about uh, testing those types of transistors. Uh, BC109, first of all I'll go to VCE with the base open. The voltage across the collector emitter with the base open. These are maximum, absolute maximum ratings, 20 volts. Ulch. Going to go uh, down here a little bit and have a look at this last slide, second last slide. I had the transistor set up. I put a switch into the base and I opened the switch. And... Um, with 1.9k resistor in the collector, uh, base open, 20 volts VCC. Of course, uh, there I'm getting the full 20 volts across that because there's no current flowing. There's only leakage current of 5 picoamps, which is very small indeed. This is called cutoff, the cutoff uh, area of the transistor. 
And if we scroll right back up to uh, our characteristic uh, curves, this would be uh, cutoff here. Cutoff is where uh, the base current is zero and there's no more uh, current flowing uh, in that transistor. And we in fact have the full VCE across that. Uh, you can see here's VCE on the bottom of the graph and that VCE across the bottom. And look, here's V breakdown. Uh, in that example I gave, the chart said absolute maximum rating with 20 volts. Well, in fact, with the base open, I did have 20 volts across it. So uh, if that had been a real transistor, uh, chances are that I may have damaged that uh, that transistor. So um, yeah, be, be careful. Always take note of those absolute maximum uh, ratings. There's also a set of um, collector characteristic curves here. Uh, again for the BC107 family and because these are a small signal transistor mostly they'd be running with base currents of like 2 microamps, 3 microamps, 4 microamps IC maybe around about 1, 1.5 milliamps, something like that and you can see here though, quite incredible, even a BC109, that whole family, the uh, absolute maximum ratings I see, 100 milliamps. Jeez, you, uh, that'd be a lot of current to push through a small signal transistor like that. Uh, P total, milliwatts, 300 milliwatts. We're going to see on another slide that uh, uh, at one point I am running that transistor at 200 milliwatts of power dissipation, which would be about two thirds uh, of that uh, maximum. And of course, the junction temperature uh, was tested minus 55 up to 175 degrees C. It's, uh, that's also pretty hot for the junction temperature. All right, so back down here, we'll start with uh, cutoff again. We know about cutoff, no current flows, very straightforward. No base current, no collector current. Uh, in this slide, I've called this, it's in the active region, which is just prior to saturation. What do I mean by that? It's not exactly in saturation and it's right at the end of the active region. Why? Note, I've got a 1.9K resistor here. The voltage across the 1.9K resistor is 19.3 volts. The voltage across VCE is 707 millivolts. 707 millivolts is just slightly higher than my base voltage at 0.7 of a volt. Therefore, this is still working as reverse bias junction, therefore it's still by definition in the active uh, region. And look at the current, 10.15 milliamps. Now this is, this is a phenomenon that we're going to do a little study on here. I've got the 1.9K resistor wired up and I've got the 10.15 milliamps. And, uh, you know, the base current, it has to be set permanently there. It's fixed at around about 100 microamps. That's 4.3 volts, you know, minus that 0.7 from that, 4.3 volts over 43K. So I'm going to change that 1.9K resistor down to 1.5K. 1.5K. And then we're going to take a look at that. Oh, 10.15 milliamps. But now I've got 4.77 volts across that. And of course, I've got to have the balance across that, which is 15.23 volts to add up to 20 volts by Kirchhoff's voltage law. So what's happened? How come we've got the same, the same current? Remember the characteristic curve. The characteristic curve is flat, providing the base current doesn't change because the base current times the beta, which is 100 for these transistors. You can see it. I've got it on my diagrams here. Base current is one, beta is 100. So therefore, 10.15 milliamps, it's fixed. Let's change that again. Let's go and get that and change it down to maybe 700 ohms. 700 ohms. 700 ohms. 10.15 milliamps. Now we've got 12.89 volts across the collector emitter junction, and I've got the balance across that, which is uh, 7.18, 7.108 volts. Let's take this right down to uh, 20 ohms. 10.15 milliamps. Now I've got nearly all of the supply voltage, 20 volt supply. I've got 19.8 volts across the transistor. And of course, how much will I have across that resistor? Only 200 millivolts. All right, so in the active region, we can have a huge range of different 
resistances here, external resistances to the uh, transistor in this configuration because the IC is set by beta times IB. Alright, so there we are. Now what happens if we go past that 1.9K saturation? Alright, 2K. Let's go and do it, then we'll come back to that slide. So there's our resistor, let's add a couple of zeros to that. 2000 ohms, 2K. 2K, ooh, what's happened to our lovely current that we had that was constant all the way along? Now all of a sudden it's changed, it's gone down to 9.9 .9 milliamps. We've only got 190 millivolts of uh, uh, VCE. 190 millivolts of VCE as opposed to 600 millivolts of VBE. Therefore, we've got a reverse bias collection collector base junction. Therefore, we're certainly in the uh, saturation region of the uh, transistor operation now. This is used for switching. Reason being, Q1 has very low power dissipation in this, uh, this operating region. If we've only got uh, 0.2 of a volt, P equals V times I, we multiply it out, we get 19 milliwatts being dissipated by that transistor. Uh, all of the power is being dissipated by that. We can do the power on that, uh, that, that resistor. It's got 19.8 volts across it. Uh, v squared on R for the power, 196 milliwatts across that. So we still satisfy the total power dissipation in the circuit. It's being shared between Q1 and the external load, but in this case, all the power is in the external load, not in the transistor. So the transistor runs nice and cool in this situation, which is something different to what's happening in the active region. At switching, we uh, always, I'll do actually a third video, I think, on switching circuits because we really want to turn the transistor on hard uh, for switching. In the uh, next slide, I have uh, the active region. And uh, in the active region, even though I've got 20 ohms, remember we had 20 ohms before, um, I've, I've still got uh, the correct uh, bias across the collector base junction, which satisfies the definition of active range, but, oh my, the power in the transistor now is a lot higher. We've got 19.8 volts across the collector emitter junction, um, P equals V times I, multiplied out, I've got 200 milliwatts of dissipation there and I've got hardly any dissipation happening in that external resistor. So in this case, the transistor is absolutely going to cook. The absolute maximum ratings for him are uh, 300 milliwatts. I'm dissipating 200 milliwatts. So um, this would be hopeless if we were trying to uh, switch an external load. Uh, it's, it's right up at the far end of the scale, even for the active region. If we go back up here to... Um, our, our chart, you know, if we've got uh, a transistor set up, we've got saturation up here, we've got uh, cutoff down here. So, my low, it's in the active region, you couldn't really run much of an AC signal across it because we need to really have our uh, circuit midpoint biased so that we can run a nice AC signal uh, into that circuit and we can get a large voltage swing on the output. In the next slide, we'll have a look at the uh, base voltage change that we got coming in here, and therefore the base current change. So uh, that was back down here, wasn't it? There we are there, yes. So although it's active, it's a circuit with that type of bias situation there, uh, not going to be much good to us at all. Um, Another active uh, slide here, and this time I've got a 1K resistor. Let's just go and do that before we have a close look at that slide. 1K, 1K, and now we've got 9.85 volts across VCE. Therefore, we've got around about 10 volts across that uh, uh, resistor. Therefore, the transistor is midpoint biased. That's exactly how I'd like to have this transistor set up. Still my 10.15, it's constant current, but I've got midpoint bias happening there on the collector. And that's this slide here. Um, VRC is 10.15 and uh, VCE 9.85. They both add up, of course, to VCC. Uh, beautiful, active region, midpoint biased, exactly where I want my transistor to be. All right.
right, I think we've just about covered everything I wanted to do in that. Just a recap then, the three different current uh, regions in the transistor. We've got cutoff, no base current, therefore no collector current. Saturation, we've got a reverse biased uh, collector base junction. And uh, we've got um, VCE is down to just about short circuit. And we've got very little power dissipation. Uh, happening in the transistor itself, all of the power dissipation can happen with the uh, external resistance. And in the active region, this is where we can use our transistor for amplification, can also use the transistor uh, for circuits that require some sort of constant current, like charging some sort of a special battery that required constant current to charge it perhaps. Uh, the current is dictated by and uh, determined by uh, beta times IB. So we've got a beta of 100, we've got 100 microamps, going to have 10 milliamps of uh, collector current over a very, very wide range of um, external uh, resistances there. Uh, we had a look at the uh, characteristic curves, a group of a family of characteristic curves here. We've taken a bit of a browse at the cue point. We'll come back in the next video and take a closer look at that. So coming right down to the bottom, here's our board again. We started with this. I've said here in the next video, we'll explore signal processing by this amplifier and examine cutoff clipping and saturation clipping. Those two last questions. What's the function of this variable resistor on this board? You might just freeze the video and have a look at that circuit and work it out. If we change the value of this resistor, will it collect the current change? They're two takeaway questions. This has been Greg Moore for TAFE New South Wales. I hope that helped.